Hey everyone, I just wanted to start off the video by thanking those who support this channel here on YouTube as well as those who do so over on Patreon. On screen are the names of all those wonderful people who make me feel more comfortable producing content like this. Thank you so much, and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into something totally new for this channel. This is gonna be really weird. <laughs> this is gonna be a really weird one. Hey everyone, Chari5 here, and um, I've never done something like this before. I don't really know how to approach it. About a year ago, I started collecting video game art books, and I started off with the Sonic the Hedgehog 25th Anniversary art book. I haven't opened this because I wanted to uh, do something like this with you guys and go through what the art book looks like. I sort of fell out of love with the whole Sonic the Hedgehog uh, video making thing. I didn't want to be tied to one franchise, but I figured, you know what? If there's got to be something that I've got to play <laughs> for my channel for the rest of my career, it, it might as well be something that I'm, I'm very familiar with and that I love. Um, there are worse fandoms to be a part of. That's a lie. <laughs> You know, there, there's always something I've wanted to be my thing. I, I realized I didn't have a thing that I collected and I figured, you know what? Well, I'm an artist. I, I like video games. Why not collect video game art books? That seems like a really cool thing. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, I'll show you guys that in a bit. This is like the protector of the thing. It has like, I don't know if that even, if you can even see that. It comes across very, very briefly on the front. Like I don't, it's very hard to see in the camera, but like it, it has Sonic's soles on the, on the front thing. That's neat. So the thing that I oogled at, this is amazing. I absolutely love this. I adore this. This is one of my prized possessions now. <laughs> I don't even want to take it out of its thing. It's, oh God, it's so pretty. Oh, you, you guys have probably seen this before. This is a Yuji Uekawa piece. He's the one who redesigned Sonic for Sonic Adventure. And the reason why I am I love this, the quality is so nice. I don't even want to touch it. <laughs> it's because he greatly influenced my my uh, art style. So like, this is this is amazing. This is, my finger shouldn't even be touching this. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay, so there were only apparently 2,500 of these made. Um, and mine is number 1,751. So that's pretty neat. Oh God, I, oh, I don't want to touch it. <laughs> My greasy ass fingers are gonna destroy it. Oh, this thing is so hard to take off. <laughs> I just wanna see the art, dang it. So from the offset, I don't really know how it is I wanna do this because there's there's so much contained within this art book and I don't like, I, I don't know how I'm going to edit this to show you guys what I wanna show you. Like if I should show you everything, if I should just show you the things that I, I think is the most interesting. That's kind of how I wanna go about it, but I'm not sure. Cook & Becker, an international art dealership and art book publisher from Amsterdam, the Netherlands, takes this to heart. Though books like this, through books like this one, we hope to show how video game art and design matter and how video games are cultural artifacts that represent a value beyond the games themselves. That by itself, I think, makes me respect this book so much more because I, I, I've always said that, you know, people say that video games aren't art. And I, I feel like even if you're of that mindset, you still have to acknowledge that a lot of art goes into them. You know, like a lot of design, a lot like, Music, design, cinematography, a lot of that goes into crafting a game. So that by itself, you know, I, I want to see what other things Cook and Becker have done um, for video games. I'm, I'm, I'm very interested. Oh, goodness. I'm going to have to take off the, uh, the, the casing for this because it keeps... Oh, that's cute. It keeps sliding off, so I'm going to have to carefully take this off. That being said, it does have a really cute, like, ring design on it. That's, that's really neat. Wow, that's beautiful. That's really, really gorgeous. <laughs> It's a little hard to look at, if only because of... <laughs> it's just the way that it cuts Sonic down, the modern Sonic down the middle is very strange. <laughs> Basically, like, even just reading through this initial uh, blurb of, of the design history, they, they really do seem to know what it is that they're talking about, given that, like, a lot of this history is correct by referencing service games and, and the coin-operated machines that they had. These... This is amazing. Like it, it's not just because I, I, I initially thought it was just going to be the art, right? But it's, it's a lot of information on the game as well, which I think personally is, is just really, really cool. I, I, <laughs> I didn't even catch that. It has both the, um, the Japanese and the U.S. like renders of the character, which is so strange to see in like full detail because you can really see like every, every brushstroke that went into designing both these. It, it's, it's honestly amazing. 
and referencing like the state of video games at the time. It's it's really, really cool. Like, I don't want to read through these just because it's it's just so much information that I don't want to like bore you guys with all this. Like, the, the, they have schematics of, of the master system. They have schematics of uh, like, they're even referencing like Alex Kidd, which is, say, was Sega's mascot at the time. The pixel art, wow. Alex Kidd as he appeared in this first game, Alex Kidd in the Miracle World on the Sega Master System Mark III. For some time, the character served as Sega's unofficial mascot, but was finally replaced with the Blue Hedgehog. The quality of the paper is so good that I often think that there are two, <laughs> two or three different pages that I'm pulling, but they're, it's just the one, it's, it's insane. Interesting. Okay, so this is what Sonic's original design was when they were really, when they were trying to come up with the mascot for the Genesis. And, and Sonic was, I think, originally supposed to be a rabbit of some kind. Cause you can see like the influences on like Felix the Cat and Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Like I, that, I see a lot of Felix on the <coughs> in the one on the left and a lot of um, like Disney or Mickey Mouse Oswald on, on the right. Naoto Oshima's bunny character circa, oh, okay, this is what you see on the left. His bunny character circa 1990 would start the design process that led to the first Sonic the Hedgehog game. And these two are other entries that, okay, wow, I don't think I've ever seen this. So these are two other characters that were also um, part of the design, because there was like a competition within Sega to, to find out uh, what their character would be. And what I love about these renders too, I don't know if that's on the back or if that's the front or what, that has to be the back, right? No, that looks like it's on this page. So if you if you look at, at the, uh, I don't know if this is gonna come out, I, I'm gonna scan some of these. If you look at the wolf character, you can see the original Robotnik drawing on the back, which I think might be a remnant from that original like paper scan. Like you can see the, the original Robotnik almost as if it were uh, erased. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy. And then this was their hedgehog character. Okay. <laughs> I, I love that they tried to spell hedgehog there, but it's, it's just heat hog. <laughs> In a way, I feel like it's very refreshing to see a lot of this stuff because, you know, sometimes as, as a non-professional artist, I don't like to say that I'm professional because I didn't like go to school for it, but it, it's sometimes discouraging whenever I doodle something and I'm just like, oh, this is great. I call myself an artist, but then I see stuff like, this <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> never mind. I mean, it's just doodling is a part of the design process, I suppose. <laughs> wow. Wow, this is cool. After struggling to find the right in-game proportions for Sonic, programmer Yuji Naka asked Sega to make a clay figurine based on Oshima's early designs to help the team better understand Sonic's three-dimensional properties, such as the look and position of the quills. That's, that's fascinating, because I don't think that that's something they used to do back in the day is it's it's definitely something they do nowadays, especially in movies. They, they make clay sculptures of the characters to know what their proportions are gonna be, but they always thought of Sonic in 3D despite it being a 2D game. Like they always thought of the character in 3D. I kind of wish that there were some of the clay sculptures, like photos of it in this, even schematics on like how the, the, the legs would work. That's really cool. Okay, so stuff like this is stuff I love seeing. You have like this onion paper. I don't know if that's the correct term for it, but that's that, that's uh, that's what it's known in some languages, I believe. Wow, dude, it's it's crazy. I I love it. I'm just speechless. It's it's. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I love that you can see that even from the beginning there was always this sort of Aztec or or ancient Peruvian sort of style that they were going for with the with the um, structures in the back. That's really, really cool. I, I, I wonder what a game with a loop that looks like this would look like. Sonic Team went out of their way to give Sonic the Hedgehog's level designs a futuristic look, applying several optic tricks. Although the palm trees are made from pixels, cubes, the leaves appear to be made out of polygons, multi-sided plants. Yes, that's true. You know, I never, I mean, I've always noticed that, but I don't think I've ever really thought about it. Again, like, it, it's so interesting how this was designed this way and, like, how you would go into it. Like, I'm, I'm trying to think what this level is, right? Because I it could be Labyrinth Zone because you're, you're clearly going into the water there, but this feels like it's clearly Marble Zone. This definitely reminds me of Marble Zone. This seems like an unused version of, of what would eventually become Labyrinth Zone, though. This is more of an industry-based, I think this is what eventually became Scrap Brain. It looks very Scrap Brain-ish. It, it even reminds me a little bit of Chemical Plant, like the, the Chemical Plant we got in Mania. It, we have Starlight Zone, Clockwork Zone, which I eventually became like uh, Scrap Brain Zone. Uh, there's Labyrinth, 
Green Hill in the back there, you can barely see it. Sparkling Zone, interesting. Spring Yard, Spring Yard Zone. Why can't I think of Spring Yard Zone? <laughs> There's Madonna. Everyone, like Madonna is so interesting. I feel like without the internet, nobody would know who Madonna was. Not Madonna the singer, but Madonna, this like <laughs> Sonic's original girlfriend, Madonna. It's so interesting to see this photo in such high quality. Like this drawing in such high quality. It's great that they still have these drawings. I think that that's fantastic. A lot of people have known about this drawing too, the one with Sonic and his band, and like that's that's the origin of Vector. But looking at it now and knowing what I know, I can see that the chicken in that, in, in this band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this character, th this eventually, be yeah, they look very, very similar. It's just, it's the same character, but without the shades. The figure in the bee costume later became Sonic's rival, Ivo Robotnik. Oh, 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 in this B costume, I'm like, what B costume are you talking about? There's a lot of promotional material that you wouldn't otherwise see. I kind of wish that we'd gotten to see some of these in like full, um, because these are cool to look at. These are very, very interesting. Wow. Wow. God, I wish I had like the box. For the I wish I had the box and I wish I had the original Genesis to go with it. That's really neat. Pictured here are two original cover drawings for Sonic the Comic issue. Oh, issue 100. Okay. I was like, there's no way. There's no way this was like the first ever comic book. Here we have the different like designs uh, of the box art for the first game. And I have to say that my favorite is without a doubt the Japanese one, just because it's so colorful. I love it so much. Like th there was always something about the original that I didn't like even as a kid, and I think it's be it's like how spherical they make his head look. Compared to in the Japanese, whenever I would look at this on the internet, I'd always think that it was like a redesign of the original box art. And then like years later, I realized like, oh no, that's just the original art. <laughs> that's just, why didn't they just use that? It's so good. <laughs> wow, wow. The fact that this was like drawn before, I mean, it, it makes sense, but I don't think I ever knew, or I didn't even really think that this was drawn before it was digitized, before it was, you know, done in pixel art. I don't, I mean, obviously that's that's how most games probably did it back in the day, but it's just one of those things that I don't think I really thought of. <laughs> See, like, th th this is what they were doing. They were like trying to figure him out in 3D. And sometimes when I draw him, like, it, when I draw Sonic sometimes when I'm just doodling, I draw him exactly like this, just the circle, the, the, the like, very much in the way that that iOS game, Doodle Sonic, I think it's called, a lot how that one looks, that's the way I would draw him too. And it, that that comes from these original sketches. This would have been really cool to see. I like this one, the one where he's just like shrugging and then just falls like a Looney Tunes character. That's really neat. Yeah, stuff like this, because this is where Doodle, Doodle the Hedgehog, <laughs> I think came from, was from these initial, uh, inks. Th oh, that's right. Okay. I forgot. These were used in, in the manual for the first Sonic game in the Japanese version to like teach you about that. That's the kind of stuff I wish we'd gotten in the West too. Cause these are really, really cute. Early sketches for the bad Nicks. I love that they were colored in with, with like markers. That That's such a unique. And what I love about it too, is that it's not very finely done. It's, it's very, I don't want to say messy cause messy is not the right word, but it's it's, it's very imperfect, which adds a charm to it. I, I really love the way these look. Crab meat. Why don't they add his name? <laughs> these are also very well known, I think, because these, were, I believe, were also compiled in Sonic Jam. So people have seen these before if, you, if you've ever uh, played through Sonic Jam's uh, world mode. What I think is strange is that they don't include the English names for them because it's uh, Picky, Ricky, it was a bunch of names that I, I can't remember right now, but introducing Dr. Ivo Eggman Robotnik, which I think I, it's so interesting that they're using his name Ivo, because I don't know if the games have ever done that either. Ro Dr. Robotnik was used in the West, but I don't know if Ivo has ever been used outside the comics. Here it is. Here, here's like the Teddy Roosevelt initial illustrations. I wonder if they're going to talk about that a little bit more. I've never seen these sketches before, though. These are cool. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so, th I don't know if I've ever seen this render of Eggman before, the Sonic Lost World one. That one's really good. And I don't know, I don't think I've ever seen that Shadow the Hedgehog render of Eggman in, in full quality either. That's, that's really good. <laughs> oh my God, there's color coding in this. That's so cool. That, wow, that's actually amazing. So like if I ever want to be 
design accurate, I can just like take that's so cool! Because <laughs> I've seen this schematic before. I've seen the schematic in black and white. I've never seen it in color though. That's so neat. Whoa! The actual frames for when. Wow! Wow! <laughs> That's awesome. Sonic 2, my first game. This was always. And, and as much as I love Sonic 2, I again, I really don't like the, the, the American box art. I don't know why that's what they... It, it's such a non-understanding of the original designs, which I think is so interesting. And also, the, the American box art... Not the American box art, but the Japanese box art actually uses the American revision design, which I don't understand because I, I love the original Japanese design that they went with. But I kind of get it because it was developed, I believe, in, in the States. It's just, like, Tails looks great. I just, I don't really like Sonic's design, though. Emerald Isle, interesting. No, because this is clearly, um, Aquatic Ruin Zone. Secret Jungle, so this was, I, I believe, um, when this was in development, this was called Wood Zone. Uh, I've actually never played through Wood Zone, but I really would like to, because it, it's interesting how this was, um, in development so early on that they have sketches for it, too. And it got so far in development, they just kind of ended up scratching it. It was either Sonic 1 or Sonic 2 on, on Master System and Game Gear that had like a jungle zone uh, that honestly very closely resembles Wood Zone or like at least what's in here. Tropical Sun Zone, interesting. That would have been a cool, well, I guess Tropical Sun Zone ended up being Emerald Hill. They just swapped like the names with Aquatic Ruin and that's interesting. Blue Ocean Zone. This one's very unique because this is like another water level that we kind of didn't get. This, honestly, Blue Ocean Zone reminds me a lot of Hydro City Zone from Sonic 3. Madness Mountain Zone. This looks a lot like another um, another marble zone in a way. That's neat. And then there's Death Egg Zone. Death Egg Zone looks like it was the most developed. And it's interesting that in the final game, it's not even really a level. Like it's, it's because this looks like the opening part before you actually get to the level. That would have been cool to play through in a Sonic 2 Metropolis Zone. Metropolis used to be a lot grayer looking, which is interesting. Cyber City. So Cyber City was what ended up becoming a uh, chemical plant, just design wise. That's really neat. Ocean Wind looks a lot like what Emerald Coast ended up looking like. That's interesting. Casino Night Zone. There's Mecha Sonic. Mecha spelled with <laughs> M-E-C-A. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> I didn't even know this existed. Okay. Something that's amazing about this that is, is honestly scaring the hell out of me is that like there's there's like grease stains on the scans. <laughs> and I keep thinking that that's part of my book, but it's not, it's part of the print. It's, <laughs> it's amazing how, how much, like they, they could have cleaned that up, but I'm, I almost think it's better that they did. <laughs> I like that they changed the special stage too, because the special stage, I feel like it would have been too visually distracting if, the, if you had a background. So I'm glad that they went with the more surreal looking background with it. And it looks like the only uh, stages that kept their names were Metropolis, Casino Night, and Death Egg. I think those were the only ones that actually kept their name from the initial concepts to the last stage. And Mechasonic, Mechasonic kept his name too. Something interesting about this is this must have been done on a computer because these scans are not they're a little pixelated. They're not as high quality as they could be. And and they're already colored in, which like if you, if you look at the onion paper one, if you look at the onion skin drawing, they're inked and they're very beautiful. They're very high quality. Uh, whereas the ones on this page aren't like they're, they're very pixelated. And I'm assuming that's just because that they were digitized early on and they don't have those initial sketches, which is kind of a shame. Like the only thing I can think of is that they were made on a computer and not like made on paper first. I've never seen this model <laughs> in such high quality before. Wow, the Sonic R model? What's this from? This has to be from a comic, right? That 1997 one? Because I'm pretty sure this is from... Oh, that's from Adventure. That's not Adventure 2, that's Adventure. Okay. Yeah, this only goes up to Adventure, which is weird because they, they even show like renders from games beyond that. Like this is from Heroes. 2011, this is from Generations, and then Boom. I never noticed that Boom has like some really weird texturing going on, like with the fur and stuff. Like if you if you look at the Generations model, it's it's smooth. Like it, it, it has very minimal texturing. Like it does have it, it's just very, very minimal. But it, it's in service of the design. Whereas here, they kind of try to make it look like actual fur and it looks strange. 
To be fair, Heroes has kind of the same thing, which I don't know if I ever wanted to see that render in such high quality. <laughs> what is this? Whoa, that's so cool. It's like a panoramic view of, wait, does it go for, no, it can't go further, right? Why, why does it, oh, cause you can view it like this too. That's so cool, dude. That's so neat. I, I mean, it kind of doesn't make sense though. Cause like, why would you? It's still cool though. Like why would you just, oh, this, this page that you're seeing right here and then this page right here are the same one. It, it only extends so that they can show you Tails and Sonic, which is neat. I just don't understand why like they reuse the same image twice. I've never seen this drawing before. This is, wow. Also, they have four fingers. I'm glad that didn't stick. <laughs> Oh, yo, when is this from? This this has to be, okay, so these two, the like top and bottom of his hand, those have to be original concept drawings, I believe. But this one on the left, that has to be a, an Uakawa design. That has to be like a, a modern day Uakawa piece. That seems too modern. The other ones seem more, those are definitely classic designs. That's very, very cool. I don't think I've ever seen original supersonic designs before. Comic from the Japanese manual of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. What? This is Tails' origin story. I didn't know it had that. That's so cool. Yo. <laughs> so there, there's something that cracks me up. Okay, because I don't think I've ever seen the, the, the Japanese box art for Sonic CD, which is also great, by the way. I, I kind of hate that the, the logo is very stretched. But um, what I love about the, the Japanese box arts is that for some reason they have these quotes in English that are just, just <laughs> they're so long for whatever reason, they're so inspirational. But like this one is to live a life of power, you must have faith that what you believe is right. Even if others tell you you're wrong, the first thing you must do to live a life of power is to find courage. You must be ready to reach beyond the boundaries of time itself. And then time is capitalized for some reason. <laughs> and to do that, all you need is the will to take the, that first step. And then if, if we go back to the to Sonic 2, it, it, I noticed it earlier too. And I noticed it when I played Sonic Jam. It, it also has something like that, which is just, it has like nothing to do with anything. <laughs> Don't just sit there and waste your precious time. When you wanna do something, do it right away. Do it when you can. It's the only way to live a life without regrets. <laughs> I don't know, it's so inspirational, but it's just so funny. Whatever this art is, I've never seen this art before, but this has to be like some some Japanese art. And I don't even know if it's modern or what, but it's. It's really, really cool. And I wonder if it came with like the, the uh, like if you pop the CD in, well, no, cause wouldn't it work like a, like an actual music CD if you put it into a, a like a computer? Cause maybe this, this image was included when you put that disc into a computer. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, see, this is the one that I'm used to. The, the, this one with, with, Sonic and Metal Sonic. That's that one's I believe on the um, actual Sonic CD. Uh, yeah, this one's actually on the front cover. But that, this was like the concept art for that, which is funny because they they kept the the Metal Sonic design for the most part. It looks like, but then they they revamped the Sonic design a little bit, which I think is cool. And I guess originally it was supposed to be CD Sonic the Hedgehog, not Sonic the Hedgehog CD. Ooh. <laughs> Every time I see new concept art that I haven't seen, it's just so exciting to me. And then look at this. Th this here on the right, like you can see in a way kind of how they designed Metal Sonic, like at, splitting the Sonic design and Metal down the middle to like make sure that the proportions were, were consistent. That is really neat. And like it, the schematics of, okay, this is what his foot looks like. This is how it bends. This is how, what it looks like if he jumps. This is his body, this is his boosters. He, he originally had a, a lot more of a Sonic looking design, which I'm, I'm kind of glad isn't the case. I'm glad that they refined that. Something that we, we don't think about often, I, I don't think, is, is that Metal Sonic and Mecha Sonic were designed at around the same time. And they, they weren't, as far as I know, they didn't influence Joe, so that was just a really neat coincidence. But I think it's cool that the Japanese character, like a lot of stuff in CD was kept in later games. You know, primarily Metal Sonic and Amy. Like th those were characters that, that made it and survived like that game. This is sick. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure this is also Yuji Uekawa art. More badniks from from CD. It's interesting that the uh, Sonic 2 didn't have its badnik designs, but CD does. I love that they use that as a concept. You know, like even in Japan, like because they they weren't working with any anyone uh, in the states, I don't think, or anyone that spoke English. But they, they they still use terminology like front view and rear view to to denote like what where you're looking at it. Because I just that's just industry standard. Ooh, Amy concept art. Are we gonna get that? Yes. <laughs> this is the only. Uh, pen okay, well I guess we have this one on the other side too, but this is like the only pencil sketch. Okay, no, there's no way that that's the only render of the characters that you have that's high quality. I've seen higher quality stuff on the internet, I'm I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but this is so cool, like, especially since we have a um, a pencil and a, and a colored pencil drawing over on, on this side uh, of this same drawing. I, I This was a drawing that I actually um, copied when I was in, like, I don't know, I was 10 or something, and I was learning how to draw. Uh, this was this was an image I wanted to uh, redo, or that I wanted to draw myself. I don't know, I've always loved this drawing. It's, it's, it's just so... I love the pose, I love the dynamics, I love the foreshortening. <laughs> There's a lot about it that I really like. Also, I think it's interesting that, like, on this render, they couldn't, like, key out that white in between Sonic's quills. <laughs> That's just really funny. And then here in the bottom, you can actually see, like, the first frame of the turn animation from the opening to CD. That's pretty cool. Yo! <laughs> I'm guessing this is Yuji Uekawa art, but this has to be, like, a little older. This, this isn't more recent art of her. But I like that they're using her advanced uh, sprite art. Uh, that's that's very interesting considering that this isn't covering that era yet. But they even included the design for the <laughs> for the flowers in CD. That's cool. And pencil sketches for uh, the final boss. That's so cool. Uh, dude, okay, I kind of doesn't wait 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 wait. In Mania, is doesn't the final boss of Titanic Monarch have a a a, a, a bodysuit like this? I'd have to I'd have to see the the footage again, but I think that. It actually has a bodysuit like this. So I, that that comes from CD. That's so cool. That's so neat. Oh, another one of these. That's cool. It's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> In a way, I kind of don't get it, but I still think it's cool. <laughs> designs for the bosses. They, they were just experimenting with a bunch of different Eggman designs and stuff that he would do. That's and, like, what I love about these is that they're so simple too. Like you can see the thought process behind these and you can even recognize what, which, boss some of these are. Like, I'm pretty sure this over here, like, the, these two back to back, I believe the one on the left is from the uh, opening cinematic, and then the one on the right is uh, the first boss. I, I forget what it's called, but it's it's the very first boss in Sonic CD. Yo! Dude, okay, I wish that these had been used for the... What the... <laughs> what is this? So they've been making a realistic Eggman ever since the CD days? <laughs> Why was he born in 1931? <laughs> also, what does it say there? It says like, Emil, Emil something. That, is that his name? Is that Eggman's name, Emil? <laughs> Dude, I wish a game used these gold post designs. That's so cool. Oh, I love this design for Eggman. Has this ever been, I guess something kind of like this was used in Unleashed, wasn't it? This, like, him sitting... It's called the President's Chair, apparently. <laughs> the, the, the realistic Eggman is just cracking me up. Like, <laughs> I'm so curious what that says, because I can't... I know it says 1994 on the bottom, but I can't make out what it says up there. For a second, I thought it said, like, Chili something. Chili Kingdom. <laughs> Yo, Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles. Okay, Sonic and Knuckles are... are they're definitely ones that I think are very strange on the Japanese side of things. I, I still like the Japanese... Well, I don't know, actually. I think I just like the the, the, me the Japanese Mega Drive boxes more, but I really love the, the European Mega Drive design. This one doesn't have a quote on it. That's sad. <laughs> the most famous hedgehog. <laughs> Oh, but the but the Sonic and Knuckles one does. 
Sonic races through the green fields. The sun races through a blue sky filled with white clouds. The ways of his heart are much like the sun. Sonic runs and rests. The sun rises and sets. Don't give up on the sun. Don't make the sun laugh at you. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be doing that myself. New to the series and there to stay was the character Knuckles the Echidna. Knuckles was the product of yet another internal design competition at Sega, which led to the game artist Takashi Yuda's design being picked over a hundred other ideas. Wow. I love that they give proper credit to like the designers and stuff too. Oh, I've ne okay, I've I've seen this art before. This one right here on the on the right. I'd never seen it in this quality before. It's awful. <laughs> it's actually really bad. <laughs> And then again, here we have like the, the American design of Sonic, which man, I, I remember I really liked this cover art when I was a kid. I'm looking at it now, I because here's the thing, right? And especially now that I know this, they're now, uh, the, the American box art, the American design of Sonic had always had four fingers. That that was just a thing that, maybe this is a, an old wives tale, I don't know, but like they would, they would design characters like that um, so that they wouldn't have to animate, especially for animators, they wouldn't have to animate a, a another digit that was very useless. But here, they kind of had to retcon that because it's Sonic 3 and they wanted him to hold up three fingers. So it wouldn't make much sense if he was like doing this to, to represent three. Uh, so they gave him like an extra, and you can see it on Tails too, like they gave them extra digits, which at first glance looks natural, but it you can tell that design wise, it just doesn't work with that three there. And then like you see Knuckles in the in the bushes and I don't know, it. yeah, this design doesn't really do it for me. I, I love the background. I think the background art's great. Everything else though, I don't, <laughs> I don't like. <laughs> what an interesting sprite they use for Knuckles. <laughs> yes, let's go. This is also art that I think is in Sonic Jam. I don't, I honest to God, I don't know why they use onion skins to, to show this concept art. But I kind of love it. I kind of just love that they did that. Oh, oh, this one, this one's the other way around. This one opens up on the right. Oh, Sonic Spinball. <laughs> and see, this is another one. Okay, remember how I said in Sonic 1 that I thought that that was like art that was meant to redraw the original box art? <clears throat> Sonic Spinball was 100%, 110% the same thing for me. I thought that this was like just random art from the same artist that was Sonic doing a spin dash. I didn't realize it was official Japanese artwork for Sonic Spinball, and it's so much better than the American box art, and it's way better than the Game Gear box art, which I don't understand why they tried to tie this game into... Well, okay, to be fair, I think that the Sonic on the Game Gear version, because I think it's the, it's the Game Gear version, right? Because this was either the Game Gear version or the European version. I can't remember what this one is supposed to be. But this one actually makes... It's kind of like a marriage between the Japanese design, but with the American shading technique, which I think honestly looks really good. I just hate that they went with the Saturday morning cartoon version of Eggman. I don't know why they did that. There's no point to it. <laughs> So here we have promotional art for Sonic Chaos by Greg Martin, British artist Gregory James Martin. Oh, he passed away in 2013, that's a shame. Was specialized in promotional artwork for television shows and video games and worked with Sega Marketing on Sonic promotional art for Western markets for many years. Is he also the one that came up with the... No, right? I wonder if he was because that would be very interesting. If he came up with with the Western design for Sonic, because if so, I'm 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 sorry to disrespect him, but I, I just I really I'm not a fan of the way he looks in this art. But I also don't know if he just did this art specifically um, for for Sonic Chaos, or, or if he did the redesign altogether. Hey everyone, editing Chari here. Um, so during the editing of this video, I actually took the time to look up Greg Martin and his work because I was really interested in, in knowing more about this artist. And I found out that he actually did a bunch of artwork for video games and cartoons and stuff that I actually grew up loving as well. Um, I'm just not a super fan of his Sonic stuff, but I'm a fan of a lot of this other stuff that I'm showing on screen right now, especially this Pac-Man art. I remember seeing this box art for Pack Attack so much growing up, and I remember loving the art style on this one. So I can say that I am a Greg Martin fan. I'm just not a huge fan of... Uh, his Sonic redesign. That being said, and just as a parenthesis, I do love 
his uh, shading technique. I do love what he did because I think that that has sort of influenced y Yuji Uekawa as well in the future for for his Sonic Adventure art, which is like a mix of of an artist that we'll be hearing about later on in the video uh, and Greg Martin's shading technique. I think that his shading technique is absolutely gorgeous. I've probably adapted it into my own style as well uh, subconsciously. So um, yeah, rest in peace to this absolute legend. So I, Sonic Chaos is one that I, I have yet to play. Um, but you can, you can see a lot of influence here on, like, what eventually became, uh, Knuckles Chaotix. You can see Sonic with the ring, you can see the, the, uh, pulling mechanic with Tails and Sonic there when they were still planned to be in the game. Part 2, Shifting Gear, so this is, like, the weird transitional period between 2D and 3D Sonic, which, that'll be interesting to get into. Was it just supposed to be Sonic 3D? Was that what 3D Blast was supposed to be called? That is an awful, awful render of- I've never liked that. I don't think- it, a person on this planet has ever liked this render of Sonic, and that's like what they went with. <laughs> it's so bad. What is this? Is this for Sonic? What is this? <laughs> this is so good. I, I don't know. Is this from a comic? Is this for Sonic R? I don't know what this is, but I, I kind of love it. They're talking about like Sonic Extreme and the Saturn and, and like that weird, you know, they wanted to make it, but they couldn't. Like they're, they're talking about that's so interesting how they're talking about the actual like attic, appropriate and and just accurate history of it. Wow, I've is this part of like the manual for Sonic R? Because again, I don't think I've ever seen this render before, and it's it's really good. Because I I know I've seen this one. I've seen the uh, oh wow, this is definitely actually one that I can say. I don't think I've ever noticed the Eggman render in the background of of the Sonic R box art. I thought it was just Tails, Sonic, and Knuckles. I've never seen Eggman in the back there. That is... That's criminal. <laughs> it looks so bad. But honestly, I, I prefer, like, the Western box art to the Japanese one for, for, for once. It's not bad box art. I just... I don't know. I kind of like them using higher poly renders for this one more. It looks more professional, I guess. <laughs> oh! <laughs> This art is so good! Oh, I I love it. Wait, because both of these follow the sort of Japanese style art, but I'm wondering if one of these is more closely resembling the uh, the uh, American art. Because I, I look at Tails on the right, and that looks more like American Tails to me. But they're both in that, like, Japanese art style, and they're so- it's just so good. Part two is very short, but I, I- I understand it. Here we're talking about the shift into 3D and the Uikawa, uh, design and- and his reign as- as designer. Yes. The advertisement poster for the announcement of Sonic Adventure showed a shocking new design feature. Sonic suddenly had green eyes. So this was- wow, okay, I- I don't think I actually knew that. This was promotional material for Sonic Adventure. Because if when I look at this image, what I immediately think of is um, June Suno's guitar from Crush 40. But this was promotional material. It, and it's the whole, like, green eyes debate. <laughs> like that. I mean, to be fair, I don't think that's as controversial as, like, the blue arms thing. But still, like, that's interesting. And here we see, like, honestly, this is so, this is so Sonic X looking. Some of, some of this concept art. Actually, this is just straight up Sonic X. I'm, I'm pretty sure that like that was used as, like this concept art was eventually used as just Sonic X art. <laughs> um, and you can see that initial shading was very Naoto Oshima styled. Like it was flat, it was, you know, bold, but it, it, it some of it has that, that Uekawa flair. And like they were looking for something new, you know, like you can see some of the poses, some of the dynamism, some of like the, the sort of squash and stretch to show the speed and like the roundness of, I don't, like, like the, he did such a great job modernizing the character, I feel like. I don't know why I kind of love this transition between classic and modern Sonic that the, the, the middle one of these has. Um, because it's, it's such a marriage of both concepts. It, it looks so much like classic Sonic, but there's something about it that's also very modern Sonic. And maybe it's the smile, maybe it's the pose. I don't know what it is. Is it the quills too? Is it the color? There's a lot, there's a lot going on there. And then there's this like weird um, 
almost looks like a flash animated version of Sonic, which isn't bad, but I, like I can tell that they were trying new things. I, I don't, I'm glad that they didn't go with that, but oh, God, dude. That's so cool that like they made renders based on Uakawa's work. I think I, it might be the other way around. I don't know, but that's really cool. A new lead character designer, Yuji Uakawa, was responsible for the change in sonic expression and articulation. We became free from the small dart art expression with pixels we were used to, he said. Suddenly, we were able to have Sonic take dynamic action poses freely. A graphic design major and illustration student before he joined Sega, Uakawa would be a major influence in Sonic's new look. Citing various inspirational artists, Akira Toriyama's style of deformation and line art style, and Susumu Matsushita's airbrush art, but also Disney and Looney Tunes cartoon designs, Uakawa designed a style for Sonic that readied him for the 21st century and remains in use today. I think that's so funny. From the from the get-go, he's always had a Toriyama art style to him. And I think that a lot of like modern artists, even today, like people my age, people younger, whether they know it or not, have a little bit of Akira Toriyama in them, you know? Um, a little bit of, of what he did for like anime in their designs. Because I think that he definitely influenced a lot of uh, modern day mangakas and modern day even like American artists. And so it's cool to see that even the modern Sonic design was like from Uakawa was inspired by by Akira Toriyama. And I, I honestly want to look up Susumu Matsushita's airbrush art because like I said, Uakawa has been a very huge inspiration for me as well. So I, I want to learn and study as much of, you know, the people who inspired the people who inspired me. <laughs> This was a more agile Sonic than before, less round and cute, one that seemed more of a renegade than the classic character ever was. His quills grew proportionally and became more dominant, almost matching the length of his limbs, adding a set of dynamic vectors to any pose of the character. Also, Sonic suddenly had green eyes, lost his pot belly, loved by many, and was colored a harder blue than before. What had happened? A lot of things happened at once when we started work on adventure, remembers Takashi Izuka. To his mind, the newly styled Sonic, commonly referred to as modern Sonic, in contrast to the classic Sonic designs, was born from necessity after the move from 2D to 3D. Yo, the soundtracks. Okay, so they actually do sell these in physical. I've, I've been wondering about that because I didn't, I, I dare not look up, <laughs> you know, prices for stuff like this, but I think it'd be cool to own, like I listen, I've listened to this music growing up all the time. I think it, it would be worth it for me to actually own some of these soundtracks, you know? Designing a Sonic that answered the many challenges was left to Uakawa. He kicked things off with examining what made the classic Sonic design great. His iconic image, I reason, mainly stems from the unique eye shape and the strong impression of his big quills. They make Sonic recognizable just by his silhouette, even when in motion. So for the new illustration style, I prioritize the lines of the quills, always showing their dynamism and strength. I use the calligraphic line expression you see in a lot of comics. This may well be the reason why to many people Sonic looks graphical, graffiti, or street style. I can see that, for sure. Uakawa's designs went back and forth with the rest of the team, until everyone approved of the new art direction. Uakawa-san's final designs convinced us, yes, this is it, Hoshino says. Next, he changed the other characters in the Sonic universe to fit the same design sense and style. Once the basic design was locked in, there were no problems for us adjusting the other characters. Uakawa remembers the process as a refining of Sonic, in which the character evolved to go with the times. Sonic now had irises around his pupils instead of the basic black dots he sported as a 2D character. Uakawa made them green to contrast with the other colors on his body and clothes, and also because he is always seeing these green pastures around him like in Green Hill Zone, I thought that would be nice to reflect that in his eyes. That's actually such a great reason. I actually love that re- Dude! <laughs> Dude! Original designs for City Escape, that's so sick. Like, you can, this is so obviously a Metal Harbor, this is City Escape. I guess you were supposed to go, wait, is this like, is this Station Square maybe in the top left here? I, and I guess like Sonic was original, yeah, because before like Terios, well, bef before Terios became Shadow and Shadow became playable, I guess Sonic had Radical City and he was gonna be the one on like the, the, the rails and stuff, that's, that's neat. Also, there was a growing unease of Sega about Sonic being perceived as a Japanese character. Although none of the Japanese members of Sonic Team ever expressed concerns about this, there was a general feeling the mascot could perhaps benefit from a more American, more Western design. A distinction that is kinda hard to explain, Uakawa admits, but nevertheless is there. When you print a cute Japanese-styled character like the robotic anime cat Doraemon on a shirt, it will look very childish and most adults won't wear it, Uakawa explains. But a Western cartoon character like Mickey Mouse doesn't look unnatural on an adult shirt. 
What we try to do is lean the Sonic character towards a Western design art style, rather than a typical cute or kawaii style that is more Japanese, to aim for a more adult and cool American style of expression, to enhance his international appeal. Interesting. Oh, they're, they're talking about like design differences in like some of the games too, which is so cool. That's really interesting. I mean, a lot of this, like on, on this part of the page, um, it's stuff that we kind of already know. Like they, they went to Peru to to, to learn, uh, you know, the Mesoamerican designs of, of the uh, architecture for the mystic ruins. And then like how they went to San Francisco to learn how to make, uh, you know, Station Square or uh, Cityscape and stuff like that. But then they talk about stuff like the differences between Lost World and, and Shadow. Compare Shadow the Hedgehog and Sonic Lost World, and you'll notice big differences in mood, story, angles, and more, but none on general character design. Shadow the Hedgehog was made for the PlayStation 2, the Nintendo GameCube, and the original Xbox, Izuka said. Players on those systems were seen as older, more mature, than what the core Sonic fanbase was at the time. So the team worked on something cooler, darker, and certainly more violent than when Sonic was in the past. Conversely, Sonic Lost World was made for Nintendo Wii U and 3DS systems, which have more of a family-friendly status. This game needed to appeal to everyone, kids and parents, so the design team worked on brighter colors, a softer approach to shapes, and an overall pop feel in general. That's, on a, wow, that really <laughs> recontextualizes Lost World for me in a lot of ways. Because it makes sense. I, I understand where they're coming from with, with those uh, design choices. The first time the modern Sonic design emerged was for a jacket cover art of a Sonic music CD made by Uekawa-san. It sort of tested what the new design sense should be for Sonic Adventure, and it would be shared with everyone in Sonic Team. After that, Uekawa-san had the sensibility to go and take on the other characters in the Sonic universe and apply the same design sense to them. Once the design was locked in, we had no problems adjusting the other characters. Art director Kazuyuki Hoshino. I wish we had more of, of the adventure art too, because we have like screenshots and stuff um, and a few drawings, you know, like th there's Terios right there. I think that that has to be Terios, um, who is way more Sonic-like than, than Shadow which is very, very interesting. But you can see like where Shadow evolved, you know, like he had the the jet booster shoes. Uh, he had like a scar on one of his eyes, which I, it, weirdly enough, I think they kind of reused later on for Infinite. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. But design wise, he, design -wise he's way more Sonic than, than Shadow ended up being. Which honestly kind of explains why like there was that confusion, you know, like why Amy mistakes Shadow for Sonic. if. Shadow looked more like Terios, I would completely understand it. Also, I love that they were trying to go with different things for the, for the Tails design too. You know, like, should the mech have arms? You know, like, is that how it should play? I, honestly, that would, that would have been really interesting to play something like that. But then you have like Knuckles and, and that kind of becomes irrelevant. But making the mech what it is today, I think was a good call. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Dude, I love this. It's like 2D renders of of scenes from the actual game. It's wow, dude. Actually, wow. You have Aquatic Mine. You have the opening cutscene from the Hero Side story. That I'm assuming that's like Metal Harbor, but no, actually, it looks like that's weird because I don't know exactly what that's supposed to be. You have like the the street signs, which makes me think it's City Escape, but then the rest of the design doesn't really look like City Escape that much. You have the the gun truck chasing Sonic. You have Pumpkin Hill train. What the space colony was supposed to look like. That's actually a way cooler design, can I just say? Also, if this ring is what Sonic and Shadow are racing on, dude, that makes so much more sense. <laughs> the opening cutscene with like Eggman fighting the gun robot. Dude. Actually, dude. <laughs> Yo, ciao. <laughs> I love that they continue using sprite work. This is from Sonic Battle. Yo! <laughs> Yo! Okay, this is what I wanted to see. Actual Terios design. Wow! Oh my god! <laughs> okay, so I'm looking at this design right here. The, the one on the top right. I made an OC back in like, I don't know, 2000... I don't know. <laughs> 2007-ish. And this reminds me so much of that OC with like the quills going down rather than like back. 
And my, my character didn't have bangs, but for some reason the design just reminds me so much of that character. The shadow, the, the design for the shadow shoes. <laughs> just, it's so edgy. I love it. Dude, I love how much edgier this character is with the, with the scar and like the... He just looks straight up like Sonic. That's really funny. What the hell is this supposed to be? <laughs> this one over here. Are those supposed to be like sh glasses? I don't understand. <laughs> we expanded greatly on the roster of characters from Sonic Adventure 2 when we introduced Shadow and Rouge the Bat. And through these introductions, we made sure that there were new things happening in the games as well. To us, it's never been about characters you could dispose of in time, but about bringing to life characters players could care about over the years. Characters you have not used in a game <laughs> in a long ass time. Wow. Just wow. And he was gonna have clothes at some point too. That's so interesting. Like you could tell that they were kind of married to this design too in a way. Cause like so many of these drawings have that scar over the eye thing. I'm glad that's not what they went with, but good Lord, were they close. <laughs> There are, oh, there are colored inversions of the Terios design. Oh my God. That's amazing. That's actually amazing. <laughs> I love, okay. I'm such an asshole, but I know that th this is Sonic Boom art. And even just looking at this, I'm like, this looks wrong. Like, the. the it, Shadow's design was like the least changed of the Sonic characters probably. And yet I look at it and I'm like, this is like wrong. <laughs> I, can't, I can't explain why I think that way. It just, it doesn't look right to me. It really does not look right to me. <laughs> oh, yo, my boy, it's Big the Cat, dude. It's Big, <laughs> look at this Garfield looking ass <laughs> over here. Oh my god, they did like a- they made him actually big. They made him humongous. They made him look like Totoro. I love what they went with in the end, but I think it'd be really funny if he was just a massive son- like genuinely just gigantic compared to the rest of the Sonic characters. I, I love this too, like he actually looks frightening. But uh, no, I, I, I mean I love what we have in the end, our, our dopey, just nice guy. But imagine what big would be like if he was ferocious. Gamma, E-102 Gamma. I, wow. So originally he was supposed to kind of look like Egg Robo, which is very, very interesting. And then they just sort of like iterated from there, which is, I guess what you, I mean, that's what you do when you design a character, but it's just so interesting how many iterations Gamma went through. Interesting that they're using <laughs> the Sonic Battle Render of Chaos for his thing, but no, you're not gonna, what? Car come on, concept art for Chaos. Yeah. Wow, okay. So Rouge originally had a very Amy looking design. Like if you notice some of these designs, she has the conjoined eye that the hedgehogs have. Uh, and, and in the end, they went with the two separate eyes like, like Knuckles, which I think is, uh, Knuckles and Tails actually, which I think is kind of the better design choice for her character, but interesting. Wait, Shadow, August 24th, 99. Why Shadow? Why does it say Shadow? So she was originally supposed to be called Nails the Bat, which it's so, it's so interesting looking at some of these designs cause like they look like OCs that I've seen. I, I, I've honestly actually never seen Rouge concept art, which is really, really cool. But this one straight up just looks like Amy, you know? Some of these just look like an iterated version of Amy. I love like the, the high tops. Those are so cool. <laughs> Yo, this took, what's this from? This is from, is this from um, Sonic Runners? Interesting that they would use this render rather than an original one. Th that's another thing that I don't understand sometimes is that they use screenshots from the game rather than like concept art from the games. Like I, I kind of understand, but at the same time, I also kind of don't. Oh, I okay, uh, to be fair, they, uh, the uh, Japanese Game Boy boxes are very similar to the, uh, Art-wise, they're very similar to the 
Western boxes, but there's such a better, there's there's such a more efficient use of space, <laughs> and I kind I just like how they look more <laughs> as a result. But it's so cool to see like cream concept art. This is some this is another character I've never seen concept art for, and you can see like sticks the raccoon here. You can see um, Marine as well. You can see both Marine and Styx in these designs. I think Marine a little bit more than Styx, but you can still kind of see Styx in, these, in this concept art. It's just so interesting because it's almost like a completely different character. My boy, Omega. <laughs> please tell me there's concept art for Omega. Please, please. No, <laughs> no, dude. Oh, the Chaotix. There's, I love this drawing of Vector, by the way. Oh, this has to be like a modern Uekawa art. This has to be. Vector's history dates back even further. It was originally designed as one of Sonic's band members in the rejected scenario of the original Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, yeah. Because we're talking about like how Vector and, I mean, uh, Espio and Charmy's first appearance was in Knuckles' Chaotix. Um, and technically, again, in Sonic Heroes, because they're like reinvented versions of the characters, but technically it was Knuckles' Chaotix first. What, huh? Wait, 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 what is, is this in the game? I don't remember seeing this in the game at all. Is this in the manual? Is this in the stupid manual that no one ever kept? I've never seen this art before. It's so cool. It's actually so cool. <laughs> Blaze, Blaze art. Wow. Wow, I actually love this design up here. That's, this design is really, really neat. I also like this one at the bottom where like her hair kind of does more of a sun thing and she has more of like a seemingly traditional outfit. You can also tell like the difference in in the design work because like a lot of the concept art is a lot more finalized. I don't know if I'd say it's rougher, but because the original concept art drawings for Sonic characters, they were done a lot more quickly because the, the, the shapes were a lot simpler. Here, there's a little bit more nuance. There's a little bit more, there's more to work with. So they need to, be more purposeful, I guess is what I'm trying to say with it. Yo, the Babylon rogues. The Babylon rogues, dude. These are such high quality renders. It's crazy. I love it. Dude, please tell me there's a concept art of them too. Please, please. Yeah, uh, well, okay, not really. <laughs> That's not concept art. That's just Uakawa line art. Which, I mean, it's still cool. I still love it. I still, dude, this is just, this is just my Uakawa book. <laughs> I, I love it, dude, because seriously, I grew up with the man's artwork. So it's I mean, it's only natural that his artwork wouldn't. And when I when I draw his designs, it's only natural that his art style would influence my own. But it wasn't until like I started really leaning into like because when you're an artist, right, you, you always try to do your own thing. You try not to be like someone else. But when you when you lean into it and you're like, no, screw it, I'm actually going to understand what it is they do that I like and do more of it and, and just, you know, grab those elements without really being a copy of him. It's, it's great. There's one thing that I kind of wish I had copied more from him though, which is, uh, the posing because I think that he, he does just really, really good posing. These I've seen, these I've seen plenty of times the, the concept art for silver, um, originally allegedly supposed to be called Venice, the hedgehog, I think. Um, I, I remember when I was younger, I really liked this more cyber, this cybernetic looking hedgehog. I think it's kind of an interesting design, but I love the final design they went for. I think that was absolutely the right call. And like this weird, because this was very close. To, I, I don't know if this is actually Uakawa art. I think it is, because why wouldn't it be? But it's crazy to think that that's almost what we got. Like this, this, you know, more, a silver with like warmer colors and like an orange, you know, chest hair. I don't, I don't know why they, why they went with those colors, but I'm glad that we didn't get that and that we got what we got. It's so interesting that the like promotional material art is what they're using for Unleashed, and that's cool. But I also want to see actual like concept, <laughs> you know, design for the Werehog. Please give me no. Well, okay, this is still un unleashed art though. This is this is nice. This is just so nice. Except for that grass. That grass looks very in-game. <laughs> well, all of it is in-game except for the Sonic model, but it's not bad. 
No, this has to be recent, right? Th this this Sonic and the Black Knight art from Uakawa, that has to be recent. There's no way this is from back then. <laughs> I refuse to believe. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog 4, yeah. Crazy that they wouldn't show concept art from this one. <laughs> I'm surprised they even acknowledged it. Wow. This color art is so nice. It, it is a shame that they're go they're kind of going quick through, like, the, the more modern era. And I kind of get it. Like, there's really not a whole lot of concept art to be gleaned from them. But at the same time, it's just like, I want to know how you came up with the Werehog. I want to know how you came up with the Wisps. You know, stuff like that. How you came up with Calibur. And for Because if you notice that, I, I don't even know why they bothered showing... Uh, Black Knight, because this is the only art that we get from it. We didn't get Secret Rings, and I doubt that this this drawing is from like its development. This has to be a more modern design that that Uakawa did just because he thought it was cool. Like I, I don't think he designed anything for that game. I could be wrong, but I don't think he did. Because now this is just like promotional artwork. You know, it's it's nothing behind the scenes. It's no. Um, concept art, which is a shame. You know, we have Orbot and Cubot. You like we a prototype version appeared in Sonic Unleashed. So yeah, see we didn't even get like the SA55 uh design for Unleashed. I kinda I, I wish I really wish we had. Oh it's a shame. It's, it's a shame that it's not ending with a bang. I mean the renders are still nice. They're still really nice to look at, but I, I just I wish there was more Oh my god, what? I forgore about this <laughs> Sonic Boom. Okay, so this is this is this is a bit of a rough one for sure. Uikawa's graffiti-style Sonic would become the standard model for all series installments in the modern era, but there have been notable exceptions. The classic Sonic games are in constant demand by fans, leading to many game collections featuring 16-bit titles, and there have been excellent mobile and handheld parts too. And in 2014, a new line of Sonic games emerged, complementing a new television series that broke away from the modern and classic paradigm. Sonic Boom, as the series was called, was conceived as a parallel Sonic universe with a unique style. The intention was to build a new, westernized branch of the Sonic franchise, as longtime Sonic game director Takashi Izuka told interviewers. The series' aim was to reach new audiences in the West who had not experienced Sonic before, while maintaining the overall attraction that fans worldwide had come to expect. Uh, that just seems like bullshit to me, honestly. Because, like, Sonic is, I think, better known in the West than in Japan. It's not like it's not that people in Japan don't know Sonic, it's that he's better known in in the West than he is in Japan. So that that just doesn't sit right with me. The fact that they would that they would say that just doesn't seem right. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Big Red Buttons art director Bob Raffay explained how the designs were inspired by fighters and American football players. Two groups who don't really care what they look like, so long as the end result is that they kick ass at what they do. <laughs> oh, so the red, the, the scarf thing was like an action adventure trope. That's that's why you did that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, technically, I, I I believe it because like all this concept art, if you look at it, all of them have one thing in common, and it's that damn scarf, which is not bad. I like honestly, the scarf is the last thing that I care about. It it, it honestly doesn't bother me. It's just. It's so weird that they were so insistent on that. Like, that was the hill that they were willing to die on. <laughs> Sonic Boom provided a larger Sonic universe with a setting of interesting alternative designs, and today the classic, modern, and Boom varieties happily coexist, all playing a role in Sonic's future. The games announced for 2017 illustrate that point. Sonic Mania is a reimagination of the early 2D side-scrolling games featured in the classic Sonic style, while an announcement trailer for Project Sonic 2017, Sonic Forces, shows classic and modern Sonic running side by side. As for the future, nobody can exactly know what Sonic the Hedgehog will look like. Change has been a constant with Sonic, Yuji Uekawa says. Just look at how adaptable Sonic was to perform not just in video games, but also with toys, stationery, books, and apparel. One of the strongest aspects of Sonic's design is how he successfully evolved with the hardware he's appeared on. His design style will always adapt to whatever new gaming platforms ask of him, resulting in a character that best suits the specifications of the platform. I think that will keep Sonic fresh for a very long time. I don't know that I necessarily agree with that, but I, I I, get where he's coming from. I think that the characters do need a bit of a redesign, nothing that strays too far from the Uakawa style, because I think that it's honestly great. It's just, if you've ever seen that um, New Frame Plus video, you'll know exactly what I mean. Like, 
from an animation standpoint, I think Sonic and his design, or at least the way he's animated, because it, it has to be one of the two. Either the way he's animated needs to change or his design needs to change. So here we have Stick's concept art, which is, it's very interesting because like, you can tell that there wasn't a whole lot of iterating with it. And I think, like, I'm, I'm genuinely convinced that they took those early cream designs and were like, okay, we need a fifth Sonic character. What do we do, you know? Same with Marine, you know, like, because Cream was Blaze's friend in Sonic Rush. And so in Rush Adventure, they're like, we can't have Cream anymore, so we need to make another character. And so they iterated on those initial designs until they came up with Marine and then Styx. Um, Cause there's not a whole lot that changed from her concept art, it looks like. <laughs> the softography, interesting. Below you'll find a list of video games that feature Sonic the Hedgehog as the main character, together with the platform they originally appeared on, plus all relevant spin-off titles. The list does not include every all-star compilation, nor does it feature releases that exist outside the main video gaming market, such as the 2002 Redemption Machine Sonic and Tails Spinner. What the hell is Sonic and Tails Spinner? Hey, that's why I've never heard of it, it's because it's not a it's not a video game. <laughs> but that's actually awesome that they like include every single game. I, I didn't even know the word softography was a thing. Like it includes every single game Sonic's ever been in. And that's such a great way of keeping track, like what you've played, what you haven't. You know, it even features Radmobile, which was the first thing Sonic was ever in. And it tells you like what it is, you know, like it, not just that, but like what it was re-released on too. That's so cool. It's actually it's so cool. And like Japanese exclusive things, the Waku Waku games, the Sega Sonic games, uh, the download only Sonic Eraser game. It, that's crazy. And they even have the Sonic Cafe stuff. Sonic bowling, fishing, billiards, golf, Minesweeper. That's nuts. That's crazy. And they have some compilations, like the, like the Mega Collection. I'm sure they have like the Gems Collection too. That's actually really, really cool that they have like all the Sonic Cafe stuff by year as well. They didn't just like compile it into one thing. They're just like, hey, the, these Sonic Cafe games released this year. <laughs> That's so cool. Ah, I love this book. I love this book. <laughs> so cool. Now I know exactly everything I haven't played. <laughs> Yo, oh my God, Cook and Becker. This was amazing. I definitely want to check out more Cook and Becker books because this was this was such a treat to go through. And now I have that Uekawa print of, of all three Sonics, which is so, so cool. Um, let me know if you want me to do more of these because I have a ton of other, well, I say a ton. It's a few other uh, game art books, uh, and I, I wanna keep collecting them because I think it's really cool. Um, I, I, I've sort of decided to, to really lean into that Sonic thing and, and do uh, take a look at more Sonic things, uh, which includes this art book. I wanna start seeing if I can collect some of the comics, but I definitely wanna look at other stuff in that same universe as well. Like I have a Mario art book, I have a Kirby art book, I have a Cuphead art book. There's so many <laughs> art books that I wanna keep amassing. So if, if you wanna, see more of those, please let me know. And if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Stay safe and stay awesome. This is Chari5, signing off.